Hey guys, I'm back, finally back with another Cheater Stories. Today is November 17th, 2019. Today's stories are about 25 Ghanaian women who share their story of infidelity. So these women are all from Ghana and Ghana is a country inside Africa because Africa is a continent. You'd be surprised how many people actually forget that. Yeah, so all these women confess their stories to a doctor on Facebook. This is definitely going to be a two-parter. There's no way I could fit all 25 stories in an episode, and I don't think you'd want me to. So stay tuned for part two. And okay, let's go. Let's get started. All right, story number one. My mother raised me and my sisters as ladies. She did her very best to train us well. I know a lot more women were brought up well too. However, women are just as bad as men in this cheating game, except women get away with it more because... We're more emotional, charismatic, and play victim more. Mm. Men and women are the same. You can't give a guy any less respect in this aspect than a woman. I am cheating on my husband because I am no longer in love with him. I used to love him, but the love died. Some way, somehow, along the journey. We've been married for 12 years, and I've been seeing this other man who just happens to be the true love of my life for nine years now. We are both married with kids. I like how she said, like, men and women, they both cheat. I disagree that men and women are the same. I think men and women tick differently. You know, we just, we're just biologically different. But absolutely, 100%, women cheat. I would say just as much as men do. And she's right women do get away with it more i think most women pay more attention to detail i think more women are just like more emotional so an emotional person can play on other people's emotions better and it's hard to explain but women they're just better liars and they're better at sneaking around but yeah anyway so so this lady she's cheating on her husband because she's no longer in love with him and I don't think that's a good excuse to cheat on your spouse. It just doesn't make sense to me to cause that kind of drama in your life. Like, I feel like if you're not in love with your spouse anymore and you just absolutely need to have that connection with someone else, I feel like you should try really, really hard to get out of that relationship, in that relationship, so that both of y'all can move on. All right, so story number two. I am addicted to fine, strong men. If I see a man and he's fine and looks strong, I begin to lust after him. I am blessed with a good paying job. So I very often, so I very often pay less attention to that individual's financial status. My educational background and working experiences have opened up more opportunities to me, created more hunger to want and have everything, and has also made me less fearful, less careful. You just have to look fine and strong and I will figure out a way to employ you for something worth paying for, for a brief moment. My husband travels a lot to do businesses, so I'm always all by myself. We've been married for seven years. This woman, she's educated. She has a great paying job. She, she's um, living the life. She's got the money. You know, I feel bad for the husband, but it's a good chance that all his traveling you know, it sounds like he's probably well-to-do too. He's probably out there getting himself some too. Just being real. It's a good chance he's probably cheating too. Okay, so this lady, she'll see a fine looking man and would be like, hey, you know, you know how to fix a sink? Or, you know, can you clean my pool? Do you do pool services? And it's kind of crazy because not all fine, strong looking men with muscles do handyman work, but I I don't know. Uh, that's what she said. This is, this is all I got. Okay, number three. I love my husband to death. However, if I am cheating on him today, it's basically because I have an excuse. She said, <laughs> she said, she said, wait a minute, I have an excuse. I was young, 24 years old when he married me. I hadn't had my fair share of fun. 
I was and still am an idiot, even though I know how to act all innocent and good in his eyes. It was my plan to quit this habit of cheating when I turned 30. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm 31 years old this year and I have fallen in love with the one I'm cheating with. He and I have been seeing each other for the past seven years and he's one of my husband's closest friends. Oh Lord. He's married. I really wish I could end this affair. However, my heart is already in it full time. And he doesn't try so hard to please me sexually. He's just better than my husband in all angles. I orgasm just at the mere sight of him. I think I'm partly in love with my husband because he provides the security financially and comfort that I need as a woman. Just ask any young woman married to a mature rich man. I spend almost half of it on my boyfriend though. Okay, so she spends almost half of her money on her boyfriend or her time. Um, either one is disgusting. Um, oh God, it's just, oh, it's disgusting. Her excuse is because she, she married too young and she didn't have time to get her freak on. This, this lady, she's cheating her husband out of everything. She's cheating him out of his good, healthy, young, strong years. You know what I mean? Um, she's cheating him out of his money. She's cheating him out of his time. You know, she's cheating him, uh, you know, with her body, you know. You know, it's possible she could be spreading stuff to him. Most likely they're not using protection. They're not using condoms every time. I highly, highly doubt it. And they just swapping fluid. And that's just so nasty. Nasty, nasty. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that these women are confessing these stories to a doctor, a doctor on Facebook. Like most likely a private group, I don't know, but there's this Dr. Dave and they call him Dave in these stories. He's probably like a sex therapist doctor anyway. Okay, this is uh, story number four. As a child, I heard on countless occasions how my parents argued and fought in the bedroom because my dad was cheating on my mother. I saw how unhappy mom always was and how fast she aged and looked wrinkly even in her late 30s. While she worried daily and felt miserable, dad always looked good and happy and unconcerned and handsome and young even as they both aged. There was a time someone mistook my mother for my daddy's older sister because according to that person, there was no way my dad could have been married to that old lady. Wow, that's, wow, that's pretty bad. Meanwhile, in actual sense, my father was about 10 years older than my mom. Wow, that's sad. I have been living since. I am still in this marriage because I wanted kids. I have kids now. The father takes very good care of their every need and mine too. I'm just being careful so I'm not caught one of these days. An affair may not be a good thing. However, it's made me look young and my husband is pleased with my fresh looks. In his head, I'm looking good for him. Sex is awesome in my matrimonial home thanks to the outside experience. What he doesn't know wouldn't hurt him in any way. Okay, so she watched how her dad cheated on her mom and how good he looked. And she equated that to, I'm gonna be like my dad because he always looked good. He was vibrant, he was strong, he looked good and handsome, he was happy, you know? And she decided she was never gonna end up like her mom, uh, being the one cheated on. If, if anyone's gonna be cheating, it's gonna be her because her mom got cheated on and she looked like shit and she was miserable all the time and she she looked like an old lady. And, and as a kid, she probably figured that cheating in a marriage is normal and it's just gonna happen. And so if it's gonna happen, it's gonna be me doing the cheating. I'm not gonna get cheated on. I'm not gonna be miserable. That's not gonna be me. I'm gonna be happy. That's what she decided. But she equated it to the wrong thing. And then she ended it with what he don't know won't hurt him. I guess there's some truth to it, but it's just so like callous and insensitive and inhumane to live your life that way. Okay, so let's move on to story number five. Mine begun after my first pregnancy. The gynecologist who touched me, she wrote touched in all caps. The gynecologist who touched me during my pregnancy touched a nerve in me 
that did me something. She put quotation marks around did. Touched a nerve in me that did me something. Something I had never felt with my husband before. Orgasm. The doctor realized I loved the way he, oh my God. Oh my God, this can't be real. This sounds like something out of a really cheesy romance novel, but let's continue. It says here, the doctor realized I loved the way he touched me. There was a nurse in his consulting room, but she did not see what was going on. A week to my due date, my husband had traveled to work outside Accra and I needed to be touched to feel that feeling I felt in the consulting room. I had the doctor's mobile number, so he came over to check on me. He made passionate love to me in my husband's house every time he closed from work till I gave birth. I will be three years in marriage this year. The doctor was making house calls to see a pregnant lady, like full term pregnant lady. And that's, ugh, ugh. All right, so story number six. I have been in a long term sexual affair with one man for over 15 years. Oh my gosh. I don't love him, but I love the sex. He gives me the greatest sex I can possibly imagine. I've been married for six years. And yes, I love my husband very much. What the f She has this lover here, 15 years strong. But it's strictly dickly. It's strictly dickly. I'm trying to think back to years when I was single and I can I can see that like like a strictly dickly relationship, I I can see that. But then to go and marry, how can you fall in love with somebody, and you already have a relationship, like a sexual relationship with someone else? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like why why go through the trouble? Just stay single. You know what I mean? It just don't make sense to me to be having a sexual relationship with someone, and then and then go and get married. To someone else and then to say i love my husband very much can you love a person very much and cheat on them hurt them betray them lie to them is that love i don't think that's love you don't you don't lie and betray and cheat on somebody that you're that you love all right story number seven i'm married to a preacher i love him but he's hardly home, preaching assignments here and there. The little time we do get to be together is always ruined by visitors and phone calls from church members and their wahala. I'm not sure what wahala means. Dave, I can't even compete for his attention, let alone time. That's why I'm having an affair with my ex-boyfriend. At least he sees me. Oh my God, wow. That's pretty bad. All right, story number eight. I'm married to a very kind-hearted man. Everything at home is peaceful and calm and normal. I mean, homey. I drive to work and take the kids to school. He drives from work to pick up the kids. Once a week or twice, we have sex. But Dave, it's like we're not dying to see each other. There's no little note of love, no romantic gestures, no surprise gift. There's no suspense, no excitement. Rather, I can't wait to be alone and drinking with my girlfriends on our girls' night out. Okay. So on one of such nights out, I met this gorgeous looking guy and I thought I could so flirt if it weren't for my wedding ring. My girlfriends who are all married and also parents were all drooling over him. And I thought it's just a bit of flirting, no harm there. I took off my ring, put it in my purse and I walked to the bar where he was sitting. He turned to look at me, he smiled and then offered to buy me a drink. Date, that was when I realized I wasn't truly happily married. I accepted, even though I shouldn't have let him on, but oh God, the way I got to giggle and laugh with him, it was pure heaven. The spark was back in my eyes and I made plans to go out to dinner later in the week. At a point I considered taking back my guests to dinner, but then I got home and my husband barely looked at me before turning back to his computer and the kids were screaming for me to do this, do that, and instantly dinner with the hot stranger from the bar sounded like a great idea. And it's been a wonderful idea for four years. So many good moments have happened with him in the picture and my life has never been the same since. I'm a very happy woman today. He makes me feel like the woman that I am. 
so she picks up some guy in a bar and they've been seeing each other for four years now and she's still married with kids when your relationship starts to get dull like that that's when you guys gotta re-energize and and switch things up you gotta just do things differently uh to put that spark back into your your marriage okay hello dave i'm 34 years old and i've been married for five years i did trust my husband a lot but he betrayed that trust by cheating on me about two years ago. I was angry and hurt and disappointed. He showed remorse, apologized, and then cut things off with the other woman. And again, went ahead to take some other actions to make things right again with us. I did forgive him as I felt it was a mistake and he was genuinely sorry. The problem is, it's been very hard for me to forget about it. And I feel the only way to get over this is to cheat too. It's been two years now and I still have the urge to cheat too. To make matters worse, for a couple of months now, he's hardly home and stays out late every night due to work. We are hardly having any sex because he is mostly tired and not interested. Again, the way he is constantly protecting his phone, I'm beginning to think there's more keeping him out and not only work. Thing is, I'm not going to sit down and lose my sanity and peace of mind if I find out he's cheating again. So I gave in to one of my numerous admirers. Yes, I love my husband and I do not want to leave him and I know he loves me too. But this new guy is divorced and understands it's only to satisfy my sexual pleasure and inner peace. It has been good and very helpful to my general well-being. I'm a very happy person now and even my husband has noticed. He talks about how I've become very understanding lately and even compliments my looks every day. So yes, I am happily cheating and do not regret it. I hope my husband never finds out, but if he does, I'll understand whatever actions he decides to take. So her husband cheated on her and um, he's staying out late. He's hardly home. He's not interested in having sex with her. Um, he's protecting his phone. Uh, most likely he's cheating again when people protect their phone if they don't want you around their phone that's pretty much a dead giveaway if, if if there's nothing else that doesn't alarm you the phone should alarm you that's it you could probably explain away the staying out late you can explain away uh the not interested in sex and not being home but there's not much you can explain away with protecting your phone there's a reason why they don't want you to see what's in there they they talking to somebody they sharing pictures they they they're fucking around her cheating on her husband is the only way to keep her sane and i think i understand you just sitting around thinking feeling like a dumbass you know like oh he's most likely cheating on me and look at me just sitting here looking stupid no you don't want to be the victim you're gonna go and get you some the thing that i don't understand about a lot of people is that it seems like a lot of people need to have sex to feel complete a lot of people need to have sex to feel good and happy and vibrant they gotta have sex to to have a reason to keep themselves up they gotta have sex to give them inner peace like she said without that sex she doesn't have inner peace sex is like therapy for some people for some people sex is like medicine and i feel like sex has been perverted through mankind through our sinful nature everything's been perverted and twisted around and turned on its head and sex is another one of those things sex is not even like it's so far outside of where it was supposed to go like to where now everyone's just fucking everybody anything people are abusing sex just as much as people abuse drugs people are abusing sex and it's really really disgusting people are so out of touch with themselves all the possible things that you can do for yourself mentally and physically all the opportunities that we have now thanks to technology and stuff like sex is the only thing that you can get those good feelings from like redecorating your bathroom that doesn't give you good feelings going to like a, a spa and having a couple of drinks and getting a massage and getting a facial or you know just treating yourself out to a movie and some tacos or you know just like you know going to the gym waking up and, and, and exercising drinking a cup of coffee 
you know, like, oh, I could just think of so many other things to make myself feel good other than cheating on my spouse. There's so much more to life than putting your life in danger, putting your your health in danger and your spouse. Anyway, uh, story number 10. My husband lost his job and was home for a long while. I watched him go from one unsuccessful job interview after the other. I watched him depressed and almost giving up hope. I knew of someone who could help him start over again. That someone is actually the father of a former schoolmate. That someone is the person I am sleeping with aside my husband. Ooh, goodness gracious. So she's sleeping with an older guy. This guy, if he's the father of a former schoolmate, that means this guy is at least 20, 25, 27 years older than her. He gave my husband an opportunity to work again. My husband only believes he has the job because he is qualified for it. We managed to make everything look formal, as in how as in how he heard of the vacancy, the formal processes to application, etc. He has no idea about his boss and I. I am in love with both men, Dave. I don't know how possible that can be, but it's happening to me right now and they both love me too. How could you be with someone and just and and hurt them like that? If that person find out, they would be a wreck. And you know that. You willingly, you know that. So I feel like it would be impossible to be in love with someone and hurt them in the same instance. No, you can't be in love. I don't believe you can be in love with um, two people like that. I think you can probably be in love with more than one person, but to be cheating on that one person that you claim that you love, no. No, that's not love. You would not willingly, intentionally hurt someone that you're in love with. And some people say, well, it's not intentional, but it is intentional because you're intentionally fucking this other guy. So yes, you're intentionally hurting this guy. All right, so this is story number 11. I've been married for a few months, not even a year. I guess I'm cheating on my husband because he didn't really meet my expectations. <laughs> Don't ask me what that means because I'm still figuring it out myself. He's not enough for me and everything. My present worry is how secure financially I'm going to be with him. I don't know why I married him. I know it sounds foolish, but that's the truth. Dave, I still can't name one reason why I married him. Of course I love him, but what kind of love it is, I don't know. The man I'm having an affair with gives me 2,500, it's, it's the... Ghanaian currency. Hold on, let me look that up. What is the Ghana currency? Okay, the man I'm having an affair with gives me 2,500 setis every two weeks. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but the Ghanaian seti is the currency over there, and I don't think I'm saying it right. But anyway, he gives her 2,500 setis every two weeks. It's been seven months now and he is still wiring that amount into my account. According to him, I deserve it. I deserve to be pampered. He makes me happy, Dave. Sometimes I wish I could give him a baby instead. Oh my gosh, that is heartbreaking. She could fix this by being straight up and honest with her husband and just let him know that, you know, it's not working out and she doesn't feel stable financially stable and she's moving on you know this guy he's sending her so much money every two weeks she could save this money up and and just you know be on her way the sad part is that she hasn't been married to this guy for not even a year and another year is gonna go by another year and the, like she said she's probably gonna give her husband a baby so she's already unhappy with her husband. She's cheating on him. And then she's gonna have a baby with him to just really put the nails in the coffin, you know? She's gonna have a baby with him, most likely. And it's just really sad. It's a really sad um, situation for 
her and her future children with this guy. Um, all right, story number 12. Whew. Prior to meeting my husband, I was the side chick of his friend, the same friend who introduced him to me as a potential catch. He told my husband that I am marriage material. All right, so this girl, she was seeing a married guy and that married guy just happens to be friends with her future husband. So her married fuck buddy introduces his friend to her, his side chick, and told him like, yeah, this girl, she's marriage material. That was a little confusing. I hope that makes sense. I hope you're able to follow this. My husband is financially sound. So the deal was for me to get him to fall for me, marry me, and then give him his share of the cake, my husband's money. One thing he did not know was I was already in love with him. But because he was married, I had to go along with this plan to date his friend. I am happy at the moment in my matrimonial home. However, I would have been the happiest woman alive if I were to have married him instead of my husband. Sex with him is memorable and enjoyable. We still sleep around anytime my husband is out of coverage area, which happens a lot in every month. So every month consistently, her and her husband's friend are scamming her husband. They're scamming him out of money and they're fucking around every time he's out of the service area. And to make matters worse, this guy is married. You know, the, the scammer dude, he's married. And it's just very, very messy. And she says she had to go along with it. Like she had no choice. She probably felt like she didn't have a choice, but she had a choice and she was in love with this guy. So she would have done anything he told her to do. The, the whole situation is, is really screwed up. I mean, from the very get go, it's just messed up. Um, story number 13. I've been married for 19 years, been cheating for 15 years with the same man. I believe he is my soulmate. Here we go again. We argue, we fight, we disagree, we make up with makeup sex, we make time for ourselves. Though he is also married with kids, we have managed to not let our actions affect our marriages in any way. We have bought our own little two bedroom house in a gated community where we meet every now and then to keep warmth. That's what she said, to keep warmth. So we've agreed not to engage in any extra affairs so we just stick to each other and our significant others at home. So they've agreed to be faithful to each other while they're cheating on their spouses. They're gonna be loyal and faithful to their cheating partner, but they can't show the same amount of respect and loyalty to the people that they're married to. And that to me is the definition of fucked up. They're both married with kids. They have a lot to lose, including their, their little two bedroom house. These people went so far as to buy their own home. All right, so this is story number 14. And I think this will be the last story until the next episode. Okay, number 14. Money slash security slash comfort is the only reason why I'm still married to my husband. He's not my type. He wanted a trophy wife and I'm all that and more. You can see from my profile pictures. <clears throat> I am beautiful, I know, and I am proud of that. I know what it means to be in need of help and money. I have known poverty. I have suffered before. I have been hungry before, Dave. So when I took a second look at myself in SSS and understood why almost everybody, males and females, we want to take a quick glance to stare at me whenever I pass by. I put my beauty into good use. The man I'm cheating on my husband with is my SSS boyfriend. I don't know what SSS means, but I'm I'm assuming it, it means it, it's probably a, a place for people, it might be a shelter. It might be like a co-ed shelter for people who need assistance. But um, yeah, so uh, she met her boyfriend in SSS and he understands why I had to marry this other man 
we have a plan. We are both pursuing higher education in order to be financially independent. We are building our own five bedroom house. My husband does not even know my son is not his child. Oh my God. My boyfriend and I are still putting two and two together until it's time. And then I will leave my matrimonial home going radio silent. <laughs> That's what she said. She said she's going radio silent. I'm just hoping he dies a natural death or I may have to figure something else out if he starts to prove stubborn. Is she talking about killing him? Y'all. Did she just did, did she just say what I think she said? Then she says there are numerous ways to kill a cat. Okay, well that pretty much uh clarifies things for me. I don't love my husband, so I honestly do not have any sympathy left in my being for him or his feeling. Okay. Okay. All right. So she used this guy for a come up. She's had a baby with her boyfriend that he thinks is his child. And <laughs> it sounds like she's she's got a little animosity towards her husband. And it sounds like she's even considering killing her husband if she needs to, to get rid of him. Like if he gives them any trouble at all, um, that's how far she's willing to go. She would kill this guy for the sake of her 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 happiness and 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 her her secret family. You can tell that she thinks about it often. Like how is this going to end? How am I going to get rid of this guy? Um her and her boyfriend are planning and scheming every day. Every moment planning shit out, planning out their future, making sure everything goes right, making sure everything goes smoothly cuz they're treading on thin ice. And so um, you can tell she's thinking in the back of her mind, like, I might have to kill this guy. You know, she's she knows that this could turn very ugly. And the fact that she has no sympathy for her husband, she doesn't care about his feelings. She doesn't care about his well-being. And she hopes he dies a natural death. And if not, she'll give it to him. Oh man, this world is so wicked. That is it. That's the last story. And part two, we're going to pick up on number 15. Okay. From 15 to 25, we're going to pick back up. What I liked about these stories is that they were like descriptive and like detailed. They kind of like let you inside to see you know, what they're thinking and like why they did it, how they did it and what their plans are with the future. Like they give you everything in these stories and um, as horrible, as horrific as these stories were, they were enjoyable to read. You know, like they were a good read. Like I know some of these stories is like, they're hard to follow and they don't give, you know, they just don't give enough. and these gave like pretty good details you know what I mean considering like we don't have time to read their whole life story you know what I mean but you know they gave you enough so I hope you enjoyed the story time check out cheater stories on YouTube also listen to cheater stories on anchor FM I want to wish you guys a really good holiday season I will see you again soon hopefully until then take care of yourselves okay bye uh -huh.